The final analysis is that Richard Gere's film is a flop and it flops out of the box office top 10 this week. But what will have more staying power for the week of the 6th to the 12th, 1992? Well, let's get in a song and dance for number two. Here now. Oh, don't do that. Just hold still. That hurts! If you'd hold still, it wouldn't hurt as much. Well, if you hadn't have run away, this wouldn't have happened. If you hadn't frightened me, I wouldn't have run away. Well, you shouldn't have been in the West Wing. Well, you should learn to control your temper. Now hold still. This might sting a little. Mm -hmm. mm. By the way, thank you for saving my life. You're welcome. One of Disney's big hitters, Beauty and the Beast, refuses to drop out of the 10 as it's now been in the chart for 17 weeks in a row and has over 180 million at the box office. Very impressive. <laughs> Curtis Hansen's twisted yuppie fur, the hand that rocks the cradle, drops three places to this week's number nine, but still has had a very impressive run in the charts. About seven weeks now, and it's got 74 million overall, which is good going for a mid-budget movie. Rebecca De Mornay, a newcomer at the time, making an impression as the evil nanny. At eight, but down three this week, also former 007 Sean Connery attempts to roll back the years in The Medicine Man along with Lorraine Branco, future Soprano star, and this one has been on the box office for a Contact. few weeks now, taking no. 35 minutes. No, nope. Nearly all of these are identifiable. In short, nothing new. Here's the original extract, the one that works. Here's the uh, eight subsequent ones that don't work. You notice anything? I'll give you a hint. It's missing from every failed sample. Peak 37. Did you vary the solution? Mm -hmm. You think the bromeliad changes chemistry during its life cycle? It's not impossible. But all these samples are dated within two weeks of each other. Maybe the first batch was contaminated. Maybe peak 37 is a fungus. Oh. I screened every sample, including the first one. Yeah, well, maybe you used a dirty test tube. Who knows? There's got to be a thousand variations on this plant extract, and we've got to make and test every single one of them. I'm going to retest. It didn't work, Ray. It's not here. Uh, what are you running? Baseline. What are you using? Sugar solution. The same solution you've used each time? No. I ran out. Why? Where'd you get the sugar? Our first movie tells the story of a man who tries to conduct a love affair under the slight handicap that he is completely invisible. The movie is named Memoirs of an Invisible Man in a Star Chevy Chase in the title role as a victim of an industrial accident. Shortly before he becomes invisible, Chase falls head over heels in love with a bright young filmmaker played by Daryl Hannah. What are we doing? I hope it's foreplay. After he becomes invisible, Chase seeks out Hannah to help him figure out what to do next.
In some of his invisible scenes, Chase is invisible to everyone, like in this scene where government spies chase him through a train. <laughs> But in other scenes, he's visible to the audience, although not to anyone in the film. Taxi! Can they take me to San Francisco? Anyone who has ever seen the original 1933 Claude Rains classic, The Invisible Man, has probably asked certain basic biological questions, such as, even if the guy is invisible, why can't we see the food in his stomach? Well, Memoirs of an Invisible Man does deal with such issues, but somehow it doesn't have enough fun with him. This is another case of a movie getting bogged down in a silly plot about spies and chase scenes and not having the curiosity to really follow the gimmick of invisibility all the way through to see where it might lead. Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah do the best they can, and they do have some funny moments, but the screenplay has a lot of room for imagination oh, absolutely. that isn't. I don't think they really tried with this picture. In fact, I didn't think there were very many funny moments at all. And another thing is, if he's invisible, why can't you always see his clothing? Sometimes his clothing, I think, is he's totally uh -huh. invisible. Uh -huh. They make lots of logical errors on that. They should have figured that out. And I think you're absolutely right. Why not do, I expect, if, especially if Chevy Chase is going to be in this picture, mm -hmm. I figure all right, he's going to really get into the psychology yeah. of what it's like to be invisible and dig deeper into that. Make it more of an internal story. And that's not what happens. No, the key, it's just a me, stump the key, plot. To, the key to humor in a movie like this is to apply absolute yes. rigid logic yes. to an absurd situation. For yes. example, how about the fillings in his teeth? How about his contact lenses? How about if he has dirt underneath his fingernails? What's invisible and what isn't? And you could have right. a lot of fun by really getting nitpicky about stuff Well, like even that. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids did a better job of yeah. following the consequences of its characters in an improbable situation. This film really isn't much of an attempt okay. at all. Memoirs of the Invisible Man takes a massive tumble all the way down from last week's number two to this week's number seven, and it's on course to lose money for Warner Brothers, taking just nine million. Many people would agree with the critics. I think many people would certainly take Honey, I Shrunk the Kids over this one as John Carpenter enters the room. The wacky comedy Stop or My Mum Will Shoot with Stallone and Golden Girls actress Estelle Getty holding pretty steady this week, dropping just a couple, although I think the studio may have hoped for a little bit more at the box office. Just 18 million, three weeks on the chart. Here's a pretty typical clip. I'm doing it! Stay away yes. from me! <laughs> Oh, no. Look, I know I'm not your mother, but I am a mother. And I was just thinking you could talk to me, if that's all right. This is serious up here. Yeah, hey, let it talk. What do you want? I just want you to know that young man next to you is my son. Mom, stay out of this, okay? And God knows, he and I have had our difficulties over the years. You see, he was very small for his age, and I made him this adorable little wig and a beautiful little dress. You had to wear a wig and a pretty little dress? Is he adorable? I thought I had things bad. Not close. Mom! Stop. Oh, please, you don't have anything I haven't seen before. Mom, would you turn around, please? Or my mom. Both of you will shoot. Your mom witnessed a murder. You witnessed a murder? Get it! We're gonna nail those turkeys! Oh, come on, Gwen. She's supposed to go back Monday. Watch out! Look, you can already see he's gonna have very nice equipment. Would you like me to drive? No! It's gonna be so clean and shiny. He's gonna have the cleanest gun at the precinct. I'd say she loves you, Joe. No, my son's is much bigger. Ah! Sylvester Stallone. You put a machine gun off the back of a van? And Estelle Getty. I wanted it to be a surprise. It is! Stop. Or my mom will shoot! By the way, girl. Joe is still single. Officer, secure that megaphone! Excuse me, I think I'm ready to go back in now. Yeah. Joe, wait for the crowd! Please, make her stop! I'm telling you, that guy needs help. We got a jumper up there, looks like he's gonna do it. He's a very nice boy, a little rough around the edges, but nothing that the right girl could smooth out. Before we dive into the top five, let's take a look at what's happening at Curry's in the UK. There are all sorts of reasons why more people choose Curry's than any other store. Perhaps it's because we stock all the top names at great prices. So whatever you're looking for, you'll find it at Curry's. 
or perhaps it's because our staff are trained to give you all the help and advice you want. This Philips package, remote control TV, Fastex video recorder, all for under £700 and we're offering interest-free credit. Plus, this remote control colour TV, absolutely free. That's great. And with our new premier service, just call before 10am if you have any problems and our in-home repair people will be around the same day. Curries, you'll like the difference. There are all sorts of reasons why more people choose Curry's than any other store. Perhaps it's because we stock all the top names at great prices. And whatever they make, you can always get it at Curry's. Or perhaps it's because Curry's staff are specially trained to help you choose exactly what you want. And this model saves you water, powder and electricity. And all our Whirlpool auto washers are on naught set interest. And um, we do need this in a bit of a hurry. Oh, no problem. We can deliver within two working days normally. And we'll even take away your old machine if you wish. Curries. You'll like the difference. And in the UK charts in March 92, Shakespeare's sister and stay was one of the big hits. And you're thinking of I'll go anywhere with you Just wrap me up in chains But if you try to go alone me When your pride is on the floor I'll make you beg for mercy Oh yeah, Shakespeare's sister, Sarah Jessica Parker's favourite group, right? Oh, or was that? How come Starsky and Hutch isn't on? That show was cancelled a long time ago. That was my favourite show. And what's this stuff? You've never seen a music video before? A weird kid. Me? I'm not the one with the purple hair. Oh, yeah. I went to a concert with some friends last night. Really? Mm. My mom took me to see the Bee Gees a couple months ago. Who'd you see? Twisted Sister. Never heard of her. And in at number five, a brand new entry with Gladiator. No, not that one. This one is about a character called Tommy who moves in with his father onto the bad streets of Chicago, tries to keep his head down, but wouldn't you know, he ends up on the rough side of things and involved in illegal street fighting. This one stars Cuba Gooding Jr. and what the hell, James Hurley from Twin Peaks? Whoa! It makes a pretty decent start to life at the box office with 9 million in its first week, but what we have to remember about James Hurley is... James is still cool. He's always been cool. What the hell? I owe you that. See you later, amigo.
Once Upon a Crime is a new entry at number four. More on that next week. But at number three, and still holding firm, in fact, going back up the charts, is this critically acclaimed women's picture, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Cafe, which was a big hit at the awards season as well. So you've got an all-star cast, Kathy Bates, Jessica Tundi, Mary Louise Parker, Chelsea Ward, 53 million. From the imagination comes the story of a man. Joe, come on, boy, let's go. Grass is waiting for you. With the mind of a child. Yes, yeah, Cybo Man, he came to see me. Cybo Man, comics, right? Yes, yeah, Cybo Man. <laughs> and a doctor. Virtual reality holds a key to the evolution of the human mind. With a vision of the future. I have a game in my house that you might like to play. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay. really bad. I have different games. I even have one that could help make you smarter. Now, ah! Job Smith is about to enter the world of virtual reality. Ah, it's gonna hit no, me! No, no, Job, just relax. It's gonna be like being up there with the stars, Job. They're going to another planet. His mind is like a clean, hungry sponge. Ah! I just graduated to the next level, Job. <laughs> You're not the one, old oh, man. Oh, you've certainly changed. I don't know how you did it, but I approve. I absorbed Latin yesterday in less than two hours. Joe, where are you? Joe! Joe! A world where the normal course of events can suddenly turn inside out. You realize, Dr. Angelo, that my intelligence has surpassed yours. The imaginary becomes real. Trying to get inside my head, Joe. You can't hide anything from me, Dr. Angelo. And reality... We have no idea what he's gonna do. ...is all in your mind. <laughs> the Lawnmower Man. From the mind of Stephen King comes this messy B-movie, virtual reality, fever dream, Lawnmower Man starring character actor Jeff Farley and a young Pierce Brosnan a few years before he would become 007. The critics hated it. It was pretty much a bomb and has been forgotten since, but it makes a strong start on the list at least. In at number two, 10 million in its first week. Which means for the fourth straight week, Wayne's World, the hit comedy, is proving too smart for the rest of the box office. Four straight weeks at number one and 53 million at the box office. That's really good going for a low budget comedy about two nerds. I'll see you next week for some more fun. <laughs> this is my best friend, Garth Elgar. Hi. I think we'll go with a little Bohemian Rhapsody, gentlemen. Good call. Yeah. I see a little silhouette of a man. Got a moose, got a moose. Will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo. Galileo. I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family, sparing his life from this monstrosity. Whoa, Phil. Phil, what are you doing here? You're partied out, man. Again. What if he honks in the car? I'm giving you a no honk guarantee. Phil, um, if you're gonna spew, spew into this. <laughs> easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? Yeah.
mia, mamma mia Mamma mia, let me go Beelzebub has a devil put aside for me For me Pull over. Oh, oh man, uh, come on. Not again. He does this every Friday. Stop torturing yourself, man. You'll never afford it. Live in the now. It will be mine. Oh, yes. It will be mine. Chance.